Hello, so today I wanted to talk about how to grow chickpeas hydroponically indoors. And we're gonna be documenting this one that we're growing. This is a golden dragon. They're typically a long day plant. And we're gonna be trying it out in the short cold day tent. So long day means that it will flower above 12 hours, where short day means it'll flower below 12 hours. So we have this at eight hours. This is because we didn't want some of our long day plants to flower, but we want our short day plants to flower. So this was great companion planting. But some of our long day plants, like this gourmet lettuce, have flowered anyway. And that's what we're gonna go for with the chickpea. Is the chickpea is a long day plant, but it can flower under any photo period if given long enough. So the reason this one ended up flowering is because it's very overgrown and massive since we don't change the environment in here they have an extended growing season so that's what we're going to try and go for with this golden dragon chickpea i have two great research papers that i'll reference in the description down below one is from sciencealert.net where they tested four different cultivars the benavani i'll just end up butchering these names or putting them on the screen 9096 C, Hassam, Hassam or whatever, and Jam. And they tested them at 11 different sowing dates in different geographical locations all across Iran. And they were focused on figuring out the best temperature and photo period for chickpeas to flower at day length and temperature. So I'll reference that down below. And they go in immense detail on the sowing dates and the temperatures and the light schedules and all the different trials, tests, and tribulations that they put them through. So down in the research article, they reference two more cultivars, the Valmorin and Lalapur. And um, they talk about how they put those under nine hours and they were able to get them to flower and that it was a bit of a contradiction to the standard of chickpeas being a long day plant and that they can flower under different photo periods but it will take them longer so all, this may end up taking a couple more weeks to flower than it normally would but with the extended growing season indoors it shouldn't be much of an issue so that's what we're going to be experimenting with and testing out with this golden dragon chickpea we started the seed in reverse osmosis filtered water at a 7 pH and just left it in there and changed the water if we needed to, if it got a little nasty. And I've been letting this, sit one, letting this one sit for a little while. It's been in here for a couple weeks. We have not added any nutrient water yet, and it's amazing it's gotten this big. I would like to have transferred it to the buckets sooner, but I was waiting for some space to fill up in the garden since we're getting rid of these mock strawberries, which I just made a separate video on what are mock strawberries and why you probably don't want to grow them in your garden. So the second research paper I have is from, or that I found, it's not mine, is from sciencedirect.com where they talk about the NPK ratios to give chickpeas for the maximum yield. And they tried three different ratios. One was 9, 23, 0. Another one was 18, 46, 12. Another one was 27, 69, 25. If I said any of those incorrectly, I will correct them on the screen. Where they did 16 different chickpea plants of two varieties, the Desi and Kabuli. And from what I understood, the paper is a tough read, but uh, the 923-0 seem to be the best for the maximum yield. Now I give my plants 16, 28, 30. I give that for all my plants, regardless if they're trees or this or that, because I just don't want to overcomplicate things. And I use a veg bloom bundle, and I'll show that, it's over on the floor here, which I use a mask and gloves to mix up because I don't want to come in contact with the heavy metals and powders. But you can see at the bottom of them, they say the NPK ratio they are. So this one's eight zero zero. 
So if you wanted to mix match the NPKs with this specific bundle, you could. There's a lot of different nutrient bundles out there. This is just the one I use. And we're going to be experimenting with some different ones in the future. So I'm going to go through and mix up one of these for you guys. I mix in the middle of each of these amounts. When we transfer a plant, it usually comes from zero EC, which is just fresh water. When it gets to its bucket, we give it one EC. So we're going to be replacing some of these mock strawberries. So we'll test their EC and see what they're at. And if we can reuse their water for a chickpea or two, we will. Since we're going to try a couple of chickpeas in here, I'm going to do one chickpea per bucket since they can get pretty large and I've grown them in the past under 12 hours though. So we're going to try them under eight hours at 70 degrees. The optimal temperature in some of the studies was around 65 to 90. So right around 70 to 75 is what we're aiming for. And I have finally lost my train of thought. We're going to be planting one in each bucket. Like I was saying, they can get pretty large, but you could space them four inches apart which means you could do multiple in each bucket since a bucket is about a foot across. So you might be able to fit two or even three in here or four if you put them right on the edge. But I'm just going to put one in the center since they can get anywhere up to 18 inches tall and even 18 inches wide. And I want to make sure that they're not overcrowded and have plenty of space and plenty of light since they're going to need it under the eight hours since they're not getting beyond 12. And Many of the cultivars they tested liked getting around 16. So I do deep water culture. I've shown our buckets in a separate video. I mean, it happens. <laughs> so we got the clay. Now you know it's only clay. And our plastic bucket with a hole drilled at the bottom and the elbow joint. And our little air hose goes in there and it pumps air into the bottom of the bucket. So that the plants always have air. I'll show the mock strawberries roots. I hope I didn't just hit the microphone too much. So we don't usually have to water for four weeks, five weeks when we first set the plant up. So sometimes we like to go a little higher on the EC than one. We might go up to 1.2 just because some plants don't drink a whole lot. But these tomatoes, we've got them up to 2.5 and they're starting to drink more now. Where I kind of almost have to water them every other week to once a week now. But they're at their 65 day point. And we have a bunch of updates on them if you want to check them out and everything from start to finish on them. So I'm going to clean up this clay now. And then we're going to throw the chickpea in the bucket and some other chickpeas we have and document the whole thing. I like to use specifically Veg Bloom Dirty. They have some other ones based on your water quality, like Tap Hard. Uh, I tried some of those and I noticed that they lowered the pH to four. And I don't change reservoirs in any of my plants, which is a little different than the industry. And I have some separate videos talking about it. But I noticed that when I use Dirty, the pH stays constant long term, even in my three year long reservoirs. So I don't have to change reservoirs and we'll talk about that in a separate video as well with um, NPK and not changing reservoirs and this and that. But for right now, this is just the nutrient bundle we're going with, with reverse osmosis filtered water from the AquaTrue. Uh, you could use tap water. We've experimented with tap water and with hydrogen peroxide as a substitute for HydroGuard with our cracky plant that we experimented with in the windowsill and still have where you do not use an air pump and you allow the air to come in contact with roots by the water going lower in the bucket, not by supplying air. So when I first started out, I didn't always understand how much clay to put in first and then plant. So I always like to make sure that obviously the plant is gonna be near the top of the rocks. And if the roots reach the bottom of the net pot, they do, if they don't, they don't. And then we slowly just fill it in until we have 
the plant covered. The clay you're seeing me add is called Leica Hydroton or Clay Pebbles. There's a bunch of different names for it. I like clay because it's easy to reuse and lasts forever, but there's some other options out there like perlite, which I've experimented with, but I'd like clay more since perlite's a little tougher to work with, but it's cheaper than clay. You can see I started the chickpea just by soaking it in water. I do this with beans, peas, and chickpeas. Normally I start seeds in rock wool, which is a woolly-like substance, which I've made separate videos on how to start just about any seed in rock wool, but it's not completely necessary with beans and peas and stuff, so I don't choose to. Just like that, and we can string up the chickpea when we get in the tent. That's pretty perfect. We have the clean bucket, but we're just gonna take the mock strawberry out. I don't wanna get too wet. Probably should have some gloves on. See, there's still a fair amount of water left in that. So we're just gonna throw our chickpea in there. But first, let's test it. EC tester. One point five four. Now this is never how you normally test. Normally, how we test is we unplug the air hose. And you can unclip this and drain it into a small cup and then test the small cup. But obviously we have the bucket open right now, so why not test? That said 1.54, so we'll probably just have to add some fresh water to this and they'll be ready to go for the chickpea. And we'll retest after adding a little bit of fresh water. We'll add, let's just say two inches for now, just to give us a little bit of wiggle room just to see. And then that should be it with the chickpea. I'll mix up the nutrients at the end. Just because I've mixed it up in previous videos and I don't want to repeat myself for too much for people who stuck around in previous videos. So, and when I mix them up on YouTube, it age gates my videos and I have to appeal it. So, like I said, I just mix in the middle of the recommended amount with the max and gloves. It comes out to about 2.1 EC. So, yeah, just pretend that I mixed it all up with a five gallon jug and added. A little bit of HydroGuard, which you cannot add too much. You add two milliliters every time, but I say you add, can't add too much because I don't measure anymore. So I just poke these two little holes so I don't have to sit there and measure out a little two milliliter every time. I just give it a little splash, and that's more than enough every time we water. So when I do mix up the nutrient water, I let it settle to the bottom of the bucket, and I use a spare plant bucket. This actually has fresh water in it, so that when the soot from the nutrients settles to the bottom of the bucket. We don't get any of it because the spigot is actually above the bottom of the bucket. So all the soot stays at the bottom and we just get liquid nutrients. Since I don't change reservoirs, I don't want anything building up too much in the buckets. So any soot we can eliminate, the better. If you're gonna store your nutrient water, if you have any extra left over, I recommend either just plugging it into a spare air hose and covering it and keeping it dark, kind of as if it already has a plant in it. So let's say this was just your bucket of nutrient water. You could just cover this or just leave a spare net, net pot in it um, as long as the water doesn't hit the light. Or you could store it in a cool, dark area. Um, I've tried that in the past. Um, I have so many plants nowadays that I don't ever end up having to save nutrient water or have any left over. But I know that if you're just starting out and have a couple plants, you may have some nutrient water left over and want to know how to store it. So as I add the water, I just want to talk about we will be dropping our merch soon, and we'll have a whole separate video talking about it. It's on 100% organic cotton. We have men's and women's shirts and the unisex hoodies. We don't have that much in stock. We really don't in that many different sizes, and I don't know if we will or won't launch them again. Oh, I actually added too much water talking, but that's fine. You know, we'll just retest, and I'm sure that it's at around that 1.1. <laughs> Anyway, we ended up getting to 1.3, which is pretty perfect for the chickpea. We'll just grab a rope and string it up for you real quick and move out one of these mock strawberries. So I hung my air pump in the air since we like to have it above the water level in case of a power outage. But this one's just been getting in my way here. I like to keep all the electrical stuff off the ground in case of a spill, which is also why I like the tents, but they're not completely necessary. I just like them for spills and to reflect a little bit of light and to help with bugs but they're not completely necessary. You could grow without one. We're gonna try and string up this chickpea. They're really delicate. So we wanna be as gentle as possible. I ran the air hoses down this rope and then jammed the rope underneath one of the buckets. 
so that the air hoses wouldn't be dangling around in the sky and become an issue or a hazard to one of the plants. So we're just going to tie a knot like this around the bottom of the chickpea. Kind of as tight as we can get it. We don't want to make this dangerous. It's not like the plant's going to get thicker. But when I go to tie the second knot here, I don't want to end up somehow sliding up and killing the plant if you go to make this tighter. It does not need to be tight at all with a chickpea. To wrap it around my neck, around the back, not the front. And then put it in my pocket. Make sure that I can stand up. I'm gonna be able to have enough string to get to the bar and where we're gonna reach to. And now we're gonna gently wrap it around the chickpea. Just like this. All right, so you see now we've got chickpea on a rope. I'm actually going to string it up to the pole. So this way, if I move the light, it'll move with it. I don't want to pull this string too tight and rip it out of the ground. That'd be really bad. Just tight enough. Like that. You don't have to string your chickpeas up. I just like to string the chickpeas up. You can use some wind. We already have a couple fans and the air conditioner going in here, so I don't want to add any wind. And then as it grows, we're just going to continue to wrap it around the same sort of thing we've been doing with the tomatoes. And yeah, that is our golden dragon chickpea. So we're going to be creating playlists specifically for individual types of plants like the tomatoes or the strawberries. But we have general just hydroponic plant videos where we cover start to finish a bunch of different types of plants and random things in short and long form. We do it on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and pretty much any social platform. And, uh, well, I guess this is the end of the video. I think if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will try to point you in the right direction or help you as much as I can. For now, if you want, we have our hydroponic plants playlist or what YouTube thinks is best for you over here. We have a hydroponic plants playlist on Facebook. You just can't click it here. And you can subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.